Welcome back, you guys. Valentine's Day is coming up, and this is a special video just for that. If you happen to wait until the last minute, or maybe you just don't have the budget to spend $25 all the way upwards of $60 for a dozen chocolate-covered strawberries, I'm here to show you how you can make a dozen chocolate-covered strawberries for $15 in about an hour and a half. With that being said, you don't need to have all the skills. I'm gonna walk you through it. If you like videos like this and you'd like to see more videos kind of along this line, please hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can see when the next video drops. Let's get into it. And if you haven't ordered chocolate covered strawberries already, and it's something that you intend to have for starters, there may not be anyone who's available to fill that order for you. And for seconds, if they are, you are gonna be paying a premium for waiting to the last moment. And that's anywhere from $25 all the way upwards of $60 a dozen, which is crazy. You can do this on your own for $15. So you'll need these things here and I'm gonna walk you through how to make this. Budget an hour and a half or so for this. All right, so we're over at the sink for the washing portion of our chocolate covered strawberries video. And there are a few reasons why it is important to wash your fruit before you do this. The first is just to remove any spoiled fruit. Squishy, icky stuff you don't wanna put in your mouth, that stuff needs to go to the trash can any sort of hitchhikers, so aphids, little buggies, anything you don't wanna eat, we need to make sure it's not going in. And then also just any sort of molds or spores that you can't see with the naked eye, we do want to get rinsed off of the fruit so that it doesn't get dipped in chocolate. We are going to use just good old shelf white vinegar and that is three to one, three parts water to one part white vinegar. I'm gonna start with three cups of water to one cup of vinegar just to see if that will cover our berry. I did get two packages of berries because I wasn't sure what the quality would be and how big those berries would be or how many I would get out of each package. And it doesn't look like this is gonna be enough, but we are gonna try. I chose to go with the organic berries. They were a little bit bigger, which is just gonna make for a better finished product. You don't have to go organic. So like, for example, this, this is a perfect strawberry, right? It's pretty red. It doesn't go quite all the way up, but that, I would be super happy eating that. This one, you're not gonna wanna dip this strawberry. So it's not all wasted. Most of that fruit is good, but it's just not chocolate covered strawberry material. So I'm just gonna put this one off to the side to maybe cut up for later. So all you're doing is just, you're gonna look over this fruit to see how it is. And so like that one's got a little bit of a spoil right there and it's pretty squishy right here as well. So we're gonna get rid of that one and not get rid of, but put it aside. This one looks pretty good. And so we'll just go through them really quickly. All right, and so it looks like we are gonna need um, some more vinegar and water. So we've got another cup of vinegar and three cups of water. And so all you're gonna do is just very gently move your berries around so you make sure everything gets rinsed off really well. And then we are gonna leave them to soak for five to 10. I'm gonna do it for 10 minutes. Make sure that you're not soaking them too early before you're ready to dip. They will get incredibly mushy and they will ruin very fast. We'll be back in 10 minutes to dry off our berries. All right, we're back for our next step. Our strawberries are still soaking over in their bath, but while they are soaking, I wanted to talk to you on melting chocolate. So we have a couple of different options. The first is a standard old school double boiler method. And what a double boiler is, is I've got water inside this pot. The pot goes on direct heat, so just on the range, and then your bowl goes over the top. The purpose is so that your chocolate does not burn. If it were just inside the pan, 
the heat could get too high on the range and scorch your chocolate, which A, is gonna smell terrible, and B, now we just wasted a bunch of chocolate. When it's in the double boiler method, the water and the steam are what get hot, and your chocolate does not melt, does not um, burn, I'm so sorry. Your other option, and it's really very popular for this, is to use a dish of some sort in the microwave. And so with that, this is what we're going to do today. If you want to see double boiler method how to and some tips, go ahead and leave me a comment and I we can go ahead and do a video like that if I know that there's some interest. So for the microwave, what we're going to do is you're gonna put your chips in here, go ahead and empty your bag out into your bowl, all except one tablespoon. You're gonna reserve that heaping tablespoon for right after we get it heated up. So what you're gonna do is put your chocolate chips and the higher quality chips you use, the better your product is gonna be, the shinier, the smoother the chocolate will be. But here's the thing, can you use this guitar? I'm gonna call it guitar. I don't know how to say it. Can you use these higher quality chips? Yes. Can you use great value semi-sweet? Yes. Will it be as pretty? No. Can you tell me honestly that no chocolate covered strawberries are better than a lower quality chocolate, chocolate covered strawberry? Because I don't believe you for a second. <laughs> I don't want any kind of chocolate covered strawberry I can get my hands on. So we're gonna use this today just for, for production purposes, but use what you have. If you have something that's just in the cabinet from before, if you've got baking chocolate, I would not, um, I wouldn't suggest for you to do like the melty dips or the, you know what I'm talking about? The little, I think that's what they're called. Melty dips, something like that. Coins. Yeah, they're like little coins. I wouldn't suggest that you use those. I know there are some nicer chocolates than, than this that you can buy online or maybe in a specialty shop. It's been about 10 minutes. Our strawberries are ready to go. So for that, you're just gonna give them all one final rinse and see what I mean about just some stuff you don't necessarily want in there. A lot of that is strawberry seeds. Some of that might be dirt, might be leaves, might be heaven knows what, like I said, aphids or little buggies. But in any event, they're out of there. You're just gonna lay your strawberries out. Like I said, you can either very gently dry them or let them just sit out long enough to get dry. So we're gonna go ahead and leave them be for a couple minutes, let them get 100% dry before we're ready to start dipping. We will need to melt our chocolates, so that will be a little bit of time, but you do wanna make sure you don't start that too soon and have to do a couple cycles as far as, oh, it got too cold, I need to reheat it and be in that cycle. So do give yourself enough time, which is why I said it's gonna take us about an hour and a half start to finish. I have four different kinds of chocolate today. That's gonna be milk chocolate, white chocolate, this extra dark chocolate, and then I also do have this. This is gonna be dark chocolate baking chips made with coconut sugar, and this is actually keto and paleo. Someone with special dietary restrictions, these keto and paleos, it looks like our one gram of net carbs per serving. So this may be, the unicorn chocolate chip that you need. But we're gonna try all four of them today so you can see what that finished product is. And each one of these, I don't know the way that the specialty chips will work, but we're gonna run them the same as the dark chocolate chips, the other ones. They each have their own degree. I've got them right here on the screen for you as far as what that temperature needs to be. And speaking of temperatures, you do need a thermometer. It does not matter which one you get. If you've got a little, uh, Harbor Freight special, <laughs> then use it. It's just gonna do the surface area, we know that, or the surface of the chocolate, but as you're stirring it, that's all you need. If you don't have a little specialty infrared, use what you have. Again, you know I'm a huge proponent of using what you have in your kitchen. These are about $5 or less at any big box store. This guy here, I think was about $10. You can buy them on Amazon all day long, but if you're doing this a little last minute, like I have a tendency to sometimes, you may not be able to get it when you need it, which is right now. So just take a run and grab what you need to. We're back, I've got chocolate in bowls. I've got nice, clean, dry berries. Make sure you're being very careful with them. They're super fragile. 
and I've got 18, just 18 of the best ones I had, do a couple more than what, if you are wanting to do a dozen, for example, do a couple extra. If you're anything like me, you may mess a few up and that way you can eat those for quality control and then still have that dozen or whatever that number is for the person you intended them for. To start off with right now, I'm gonna get some chocolate into the microwave so we can start dipping. We're gonna start in 30 second increments. After that first 30, we're gonna stir everything. You may not see a huge difference of anything looking melted. After that, we're gonna do 15 second increments, stirring in between each one until we get that desired temperature. All right, so this is after the first 30 seconds. We're stirring, you don't see a lot there, which is totally fine. We're gonna pop it in for another 15 seconds. All right, then we've got another 15 seconds. I can feel, and you may be able to hear a difference. They're starting to think about melting now. And if you are doing these chocolates for someone else, please wear <laughs> gloves. For me, I'm just doing this for you guys. Okay, and this is our dark chocolate and it hasn't done anything just yet. <laughs> and that milk chocolate is ready. And then like I told you, we are going to temper. So we're gonna take about a tablespoon of chocolate chips. We're gonna drop them in there and we're gonna mix those in. And that tempering, the reason to do that is sort of the same way we shock vegetables when we cook them. It is to get that internal temperature to stop raising. So we'll just get those mixed in really well. Let them sit here for just one second while I pull the dark chocolate and give it a stir. Here's our dark chocolate. It is still not starting to melt. And dark will take the longest time to melt down. We'll pop it in for another 15 seconds. That's showing 101. I'm not sure that that's accurate. All right, here's our dark chocolate. We're finally starting to melt just a little bit here. I'll go ahead and pop those in again for another 15 seconds. And then we'll give these guys a good stir again. And I'm gonna use this thermometer just so we can see if the other is accurate. So we're just gonna put it in here and you can watch that sort of crawl. Oh, so I think we may have something wrong with our little infrared. That's fine, we've got our analog. Oh yeah, they're starting to melt down now. I think I'm not gonna dip any in white chocolate. I think I'm gonna use it for a drizzle and that's it. Oh, look at that. We're getting there, you guys. Probably one more go on these ones. Oh, th that's pretty much finished. Look at that. Our coconut sugar chips a stir, and they are starting to melt down beautifully now. Not quite all melted, but we are much closer than we were. And the extra dark chips, we're gonna add about a tablespoon here, drop them in there. Give them a stir to temper. I'm gonna let those sit for just a moment while I grab the other chips and give them a good swirl. Okay, here are the keto chips. And we're looking like we are the liquid chocolate now, which is great. Go ahead and give that one a temperature reading. And we're looking for about 92. Mm, looks like you're about 82 right now. All right, so we need to pop them in for another. It look like they're melting out. Oh yeah. Too much? No. Nope. Turn it. Nope. We're just above 90. Okay, so we've got about a tablespoon here. We're going to drop them in and get those mixed. All right, we've got chips. Okay, so this is a pretty neat hack. You can use either toothpicks or you can use uh, skewers, either one. And so all you're going to do is just put those right down into the stem of the strawberry and do be gentle with the fruit. But all this is is an additional handle for you. So you're not pulling on the leaves, you're not straining the berry itself, okay? Very careful that you don't expose the fruit on the bottom. And then you're just gonna put them here to dry. I've got some pre-warm jars and we were going to use those for this, 
but upon looking second glance, I don't think that we've got enough chocolate to do that. So I think we are just gonna stay with the bowls today. All right, so for dipping the strawberries, it is easier if you assembly line things, put all your toothpicks in right now. That way you're not fumbling back and forth between chocolate and messy hands and then back to toothpicks. And then it's just easier when you're in one mode to finish that mode before you move on to the next. The instinct is to sort of grab that strawberry hard to force the toothpick and what you're gonna end up with a strawberry jam. <laughs> Since we're not going for strawberry jam, just make sure you're very gentle with them. If they sort of try to push back, just give it that time to get the toothpick into your strawberry. All right, we've got everything toothpicked. Like I said, for this next one, we're just gonna sort of speed through it. I'm gonna finish the ones that I'm doing with the milk chocolate before I get into the dark chocolate. <laughs> I almost missed it. Make sure you grab all of those leaves and pull them up toward you so they aren't stuck in the chocolate. So from here, we're just gonna dip. If you see this side right here, we really wanna have that covered a little bit better, almost up to the stem if you can help it. And I know I said I wasn't gonna do any white chocolate, but we're just gonna do a couple of white chocolate. <laughs> so we've got three left over. I thought we'd just knock some white chocolate out just so we can see that finished product. And one of those white chocolate berries does not look very pretty. <laughs> it is a lot thicker to work with, a little thicker even than the milk chocolate, which is to be expected just for the way that it is. Like I said before, we're gonna bring the, bring the fruit to us, not the other way around, just so that it doesn't make a mess. Like this, oh man, that looks amazing. and go a little wider than you think you're going to need to go just so that gives you a nice drape. Maybe we can uh, touch this guy right here up a bit. They won't be perfect, but like I said, this is why you make more than what you're looking at delivering. And that's just so that when one does get messed up, it doesn't matter. And this is that one I told you wasn't so pretty. But once you and I eat it, it won't matter how pretty it is, it's gonna be delicious. And sometimes the same white on white is just a really nice classic look. And so on to the milk chocolate. It's probably something I did. I don't work a lot with milk chocolate, but it's got a bit of like a dusty finish. It's not as shiny as the others. You are just gonna do the same thing. Just a nice sort of quick back and forth. And when these have finished setting up and the drizzles are, are dry, everything's set, go ahead and pull those toothpicks out. You don't need them anymore after that. And we're done. And here we have our finished product. It looks amazing. I can't wait to eat them. Maybe give a few of them away. If you made chocolate covered strawberries after you watch this video, let me know down in the comments. I wanna see them. I wanna know what you did and how you liked the tutorial. I hope that you got value out of this video and that this video taught you that you can do this on your own. If you found value with this video, please hit the like button, subscribe and ring the bell so that you know when the next video drops. And thanks so much for hanging out with me. 
this is to you. Happy Valentine's Day. Don't bring this to your strawberry. It's gonna make a mess. What you're gonna do is start this and bring, oh, and see, I wasn't even going fast enough. And that's why we made extra, right? So no big deal. Um, I had some hesitations on how I was going to be as far as this went with the drizzle anyway. Oh, yeah, you guys, I'm not sure the drizzle is for me. I am super left-handed and clearly the really lovely, <laughs> really lovely detail-oriented straight lines aren't necessarily my wheelhouse. I froze up. 